So here's the scenario. You've got an outlet in your garage or your basement and you want to add another one. And for convenience, maybe you're putting your computer desk someplace around there, but you don't have an outlet that's convenient. So you want to add another one. Well, I'm not going to show you how to actually run the wires, but I am going to show you how to do the wiring between the two receptacles. If you need shade on your deck or patio this summer, check out Toya Grid Pergola Kits. You source the lumber locally and can assemble this modular system in as little as 30 minutes. Check the video description for links to videos and more information about Toya Grid. Before doing any electrical work, we want to talk about doing it safely. And to do that, you're going to use testers to make sure your power is turned off so that it's safe to work with the wires. Now, there are mixed feelings about these because in order to use this safely, what you want to do is always test it against known voltage. So I'm going to turn it on and it makes a beep when there is voltage. So then you take it and you put it on the circuit you're going to work with and you make sure that if you touch the wires, none of them beep. And that's how you know your circuit breaker is absolutely off and you can touch those wires safely. I can, I have my tester in here. You can see it has two greens, so I know it's wired correctly and it's also hot right now. But let's say I want to add another outlet to it. And this could be a situation like in your basement or your garage or wherever you might want to add another outlet. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn the power off. Okay, now my circuit is dead. I can see that by my tester here. All right, so what we have here is one set of wires in this existing box. The black wire goes to the brass side. The white wire goes to the silver side, and that's how I always remember it, as white is lighter than the black, obviously. So the dark screw is for the black. The light screw is for the white. And then we also have a bare copper wire here. This is the ground wire that is connected to the green screw. Okay, for clarity, I remove the receptacle from the box. And these are the original wires that were coming into the receptacle, so I call that power in. And I ran a new wire coming into the top of the box. I'm going to call this power out because that's going to run over to this receptacle over here. I'm going to wire that one as a new receptacle. Now this run could be as long as it needs to be, but in my example it's only about a foot. So you can see I have two blacks, two whites, and two grounds. Now when connecting the grounds, they both have to be connected to the green screw on the receptacle. But you can't connect two grounds, you can't just twist them and put them around that screw. That's not allowed. You have to bond them. So in order to bond them, you want to use some kind of a pigtail or I have a fancy little, this is called a grounding wire connector. And what this does is it's a special wire nut that has a hole in the top. So I can have one of these wires come out. I'm going to wire them together. Okay, now you can see both grounds are wired together. There is a wire nut bonding them together. And then this is where I would attach this to the green screw on the receptacle. All right, here you can see I have twisted these two wires together. I've bonded them with this grounding connector, this special wire nut. One of the wires comes out the top and is tightened around that screw. The loop that I made on it goes clockwise, which is the same direction to around the top. It's the same direction as I will tighten it, righty tighty. Now, the big question is what to do with the rest of the wires. Well, you've got two white screws and you've got two brass screws. So you could take these two wires and just wire them together here. The problem with that is that all the current for anything downstream is going to go through this outlet and it will make this outlet heat up and it could actually cause it to, uh, to melt. So the best thing to do is to create pigtails. All right, here you can see I have both pigtails created and the pigtail is actually that little piece of wire that runs from your wire connector onto your receptacle. And in this case, I'm using Owego 221 connectors. These are called lever nuts and they're very nice because they can come off very easily and they go back on really easily. So they are easy to, to reuse and remove. 
They also show you that the wire is completely inserted in there. They hold tight and they are also designed for a higher temperature than an ordinary wire nut. I did the same thing on the white side and you can see that pigtail goes to the silver screw and the other one goes to the brass screw. It does not matter which screw I put it on because the two screws are electrically connected. There's this little shunt right here in the middle and as long as that shunt is there, these two screws are the same, they're connected. Here you can see the new receptacle is wired with the black wire going around the brass screw and the white wire going around the silver screw. And you can tell I stripped enough insulation so that it is all metal wire underneath the screw. And you can tell that the insulation is right on the outside of it. You don't want it too short and you don't want the insulation underneath the screw. And of course the ground goes under the ground screw as well. And so then all I do is push the wires back into the box. Now that I have both of the receptacles pushed back into the box, now I can go turn on the power. And now that the power is back on, I can use my little tester here. And this is a plug-in tester. I use it all the time. This shows two green lights when something is wired correctly. I have a correct neutral and a correct ground. If for some reason I didn't have two green lights. There's a little chart on here that shows me exactly what the condition might be. Open ground, open neutral, or something reversed. So this one is wired well, and this one has two greens as well. So I know both of these receptacles are now ready for use. All right, if you have any questions on how to wire a new outlet from an existing outlet, just leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Welcome home. Be sure to subscribe and watch our new series, The Living Flip. Ooh. <laughs> and that has inch and a quarter. It's the little one. That's all I know. <laughs>